So I see a lot of people calling these Venezuelan organizations gangs, but that's actually a misnomer if you know uh, what I know because I've been keeping track of this gang since 2015. I don't know if you guys know, but there was a guy called Hugo Chavez who's the president of Venezuela. When he died, power was retained and then um, sustained by Nicolas Maduro who... Uh, through the enforcement of a uh, legal arms ban, he took weapons away from the people. And then after the people no longer had weapons, Nicolas Maduro then uh, appointed himself a supreme leader. So literally, he's been in turn for like 10 years. And nobody can replace him because nobody has the artillery or the weapons to go against the only people in the country that do have weapons, which is one, the military, two, the police, and three, an organized group of Venezuelan gangsters that work for Nicolas Maduro known as Tren de Aragua. These people, they extort their own people, they traffic. So, first you have to understand that the majority of the members of this gang, they're not bad people at all. I know that sounds ironic considering what you've been hearing in the news. But the fact is that the way the Tren de Aragua sustains power and control over these people and has them committing these heinous crimes is because, one, they bring them over, they charge them 30000 they put the men to do gang-affiliated activities, robbing, extortion, uh, murder for hire, uh, kidnapping, ransom, etc., etc. The women that are, that are brought over are forced into sexual trafficking onto the people or the bosses in this chapter are, are, um, are happy with the profit that they've made all for these females. Now, people are like, why not just run away? Why not just tell the government? Why not just run to the police and tell them what's going on? Here's the thing, that the way they sustain control is because back in Venezuela, they know who the family members of all of these individuals are. So when they signed on for the coyotes to bring them over here to the United States of America, they already had enough information about them and any collateral damage, including who their family members are in case they refuse to cooperate with repayment or repayment plans because they can say, we don't want the money, we want your services, and they have to do it. So these criminal activities that are happening with these Venezuelan gangs are because the gangs or the international criminal organization that is committing these domestic terrorist activities, not only in the United States, but also in Colombia, also in Argentina, also in, in Bolivia, also in Chile, the same organization. Now, think about this. How can an organization made up of only 5,000 people have such a grave impact? And it is because they're controlling these people are pawns. They're, they're holding their families uh, uh, hostage in Venezuela and forcing the men to be gangsters and forcing the women to sell their bodies in order to repay back the the, the, uh, the coyotes that brought these people out here. It's all an organization made up of 5,000 people impacting hundreds of thousands of Venezuelans. These are the facts. And anybody that's from Venezuela knows that I'm speaking the truth.